How many of you guys saw me waving the thing outside and wearing a neon vest? Yeah, how many of you laughed at me? Good, good, yeah. That's good. How many of you guys saw Jenny out there waving her wand? Who looked funnier, Jenny or me? Yeah, that makes sense. I heard, like, I heard majority Jenny. I don't know. I don't know. Could, that could just be what I hear. Say that again? Well, we'll pray about it. We'll see. We'll see about that. Go ahead. There's a few more chairs over here. There's chairs in the middle over here. Man, tonight's going to be a good night. How was school this week? Good? What the? Okay, I got one good. I have mostly like, eh, it's like 33, 33, 33. Really, really good? Kind of? What, how was school this week? Oh, school's all right. Your father. Oh, he's fine. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, he's fine. What's up? We can talk about it. We'll talk about this afterwards, okay? All right, well, hey, guys, listen up. I'll talk to you later, Tate. I'll talk to you later. No, 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 no. We'll talk about it later. Well, tonight we're about to get into worship, and the first song that we're singing is called We Praise You. And this whole song is about praising God and turning your focus and your heart's attention towards him. Uh, and so I was looking up uh, the author or the writer of this song. His name is Brandon Lake. And the reason that he wrote this song, he says, praise isn't just something we give as a gift to God, but it's something that can make things shift. It's a weapon. Even if it doesn't change the situation, praise can shift my perspective. It can take my eyes off the storm and put them on Christ. Uh, and that quote made me think of Psalm 123, uh, which is titled, Our Eyes Look to the Lord Our God. And it says, To you I lift up my eyes, O you who are enthroned in the heavens. Behold, as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their master and the eyes of maidservants to the hand of their mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God till he, has, till he has mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us. For we have had more than enough of contempt. Our soul has had more than enough of the scorn of those who are at ease of the contempt of the proud. Uh, as we begin to worship and we sing this song, I want you guys to be thinking about this psalm. I want you to think about God and how you can turn your eyes and look towards him. That's what this whole moment of worship is for, right? To focus our attention and our, and our heart's attention on him in this time and in this moment. So as you guys stand and begin to worship, I want you guys' whole entire heart and mind and soul focused on God and, and, and what he's trying to speak to you and say to you this evening. Let's pray and we'll get into worship. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much. Uh, for these students. I thank you just for uh, them being here, them filling this room. Uh, God, I thank you uh, just for their hearts to be here. I pray that you would just make this evening uh, a fruitful one, one that these students are impacted by. I pray that you'd be with Jarrell as he's bringing the word again this week. God, I pray that you would fill him with your spirit, utilize him, and speak through him this evening, uh, and prepare our hearts to hear what you have to say tonight. Uh, God, I pray that you would just be over small groups and allow the good conversation to flow and these students to begin to open up and share with their small groups and with their leaders about the ways in which you are working in their lives. God, I pray that our hearts would be fixed on you at this time of worship and that we would give glory and honor to you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, you guys can go ahead and stand up and we're going to jump into worship. Praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. And we sing with all we are and we claim your victory. Let it rise, let praise arise. We'll see you break down every wall, 
will watch the giants fall for fear cannot survive when we praise you the god of breakthroughs on our side forever lift him high with all creation cry god we praise you oh, oh, oh. we praise you oh, oh, oh. Let faith be a song that overcomes the raging sea. Let faith be a song that calms the storm inside of me. Let it rise. Let faith arise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. For fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side, forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, 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 we praise you. Oh, oh, oh. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. For fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall, for fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side, forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, 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 we praise you. Oh, oh, oh. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. And holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation and I will put my trust in you alone and I will not be shaken I will build my life upon your love it is a firm foundation and I will put my trust in you alone and i will not be shaken i will build my life upon your love it is a firm foundation and i will put my trust in you alone and I will not be shaken. OK.
Okay, so we just finished singing about praising Jesus and, and praising God and putting our faith and our hope in him because he's the foundation that we can trust and rely on. Um, and some of you know that. Some of you know that God is trustworthy and good. Um, some of you might not know that. Some of you might not have that relationship with God. Um, so if you're singing and you don't have that relationship with Jesus yet, I want you guys to um, pay attention to the, the next song. We're going to sing about the goodness of God. And if, you know, you don't have that relationship, if you don't know who God is, just pay attention to uh, the words that we're singing about how God is good and how he is faithful and how he is a friend when we're in need. So we're going to sing goodness of God. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice you have led me through the fire and darkest nights. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. So my life you have been faithful So my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God And I will sing of the goodness of of God. Dear Lord, thank you for tonight. Um, thank you that we get to be here together, um, that we get to have fun with the leaders and the students and the staff and the parents, um, that we can all just be together having fun, learning about you, um, just learning who you are and experiencing your love for these students and your love for us as your children, God. I just ask that you, that you speak through Jarrell tonight, that you will really move in this room and in the hearts of the students um, and the leaders. Just be very present as we uh, sit through the message and then jump into the discussions groups, God. Help everyone just to be 
kind and um, good listeners so that we can be good examples of how you love us and how you treat us, God, that we can be a good reflection of your character toward one another. Um, Again, we ask all this in your son's name. Amen. 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 Can, Can we thank Jenny for tonight? Can you guys give it up? So good to worship together. Uh, So, hey, welcome. So glad to be together with you guys. Does that hurt your ears at all? Does that wake wake you up? Okay. All right. We're good. Um, So we are continuing our vision series. And if you weren't here last week, our vision for this year for you guys is that instead of living in fear, that we would be strong and courageous in the ways that God is calling us to live our lives with him, with others on mission. And so last week we talked about maybe some of the things that, that get us stuck or stagnant in our relationship with God and some of those ways that, that we need freedom from maybe the fear that we're living in or freedom from maybe a sin or something that like easily uh, just, it, it causes difficulty in our life. And so we talked about some of those things and what our next step with God could look like, um, being strong and courageous in that area. And then this week we're talking about being strong and courageous and taking a next step with our relationship with one another because there is power and strength in being together. And that's not just true in the Bible, that's just a truth in general, right? If I, if I invited Liam up here and I was like, hey, Liam, we're gonna, we're gonna lift this stage up right now. We're gonna lift this stage up, you and I. Like we can, we can get so far, right? I think him and I are capable and we have enough strength to at least lift a couple of these pieces. But if I invited everyone up, right now and we're like sorry josh reyes we are gonna move this stage right now to the back and we just got all we all came up here and we lifted this thing i bet you we could um maybe we should try do we have time to do that is that okay no i'm just, I'm just kidding we, we, we don't have time to do that but the fact is there is strength in community there is strength in our relationship with one another. There is strength in numbers. It's why God created us for relationships, to be in community. And so God, he wants us to have a relationship with him. Yes, we talked about that last week. He wants us, he created us to have a relationship with him. And that is good and true. We should have a relationship with God because of what Jesus has done for us. But he doesn't just call us to have a relationship with him. He calls us to have a relationship with one another, that we would be a community of believers together that have each other's back. In the Bible, the language often describes us being a family of God, being brothers and sisters in Christ. And so that's what the church is. That's why the church exists to give the hope of the gospel, which is what we'll talk about, but encourage one another in that. So we're going to look at a passage tonight where the author of Hebrews is encouraging the Christians in this community that community is unlike any other group. The community that the church has is not like your sports team. It's not like your squad on your video game. It's not like some rec league. No, it is unlike any other group that you're a part of. This is a community that serves and worships the one true God that actually cares and loves and encourages one another in a very meaningful way, or at least we should. These Christians in Hebrews needed to be encouraged and corrected to have the right perspective 
And I think that we need to be encouraged and corrected to have this same perspective. And so pray with me, and then we're going to open up God's word in Hebrews chapter 10. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you created us to have a relationship with you. And although our sin, the things that we do wrong, separates us from you, you made a way for us to have a relationship with you through your son, Jesus, who lived and died and rose again so that we can hear your word and be together as a community that loves and encourages one another. And so, Lord, I pray for every student here, the ones that know you and the ones that don't, that they would hear your word tonight and desire to live this out. Speak to each and every one of us tonight, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Hebrews 10, starting in verse 22. Listen, he says this, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean. That just means Jesus died for our sins. He died so that we could be made righteous before God. Verse 23, let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we have. For God can be trusted to keep his promise. Just as Jenny was saying, our God is trustworthy. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. And so our first, pro our first point tonight is to draw near together, draw near together. This passage of scripture that God wants to speak to you tonight about, it tells us to let us go right into the presence of God. Now, this is a big deal. The, the church that this letter was written to, they would have thought of the Old Testament. And in the Old Testament, you had this temple where you would go and worship God in this temple. And there was this place in the temple called the Holy of Holies. Now this was a place that you couldn't just waltz up in there and like be like, I have an appointment with God, the Holy of Holies, please let me in. No, it didn't work that way. You see, there was a thick curtain that separated the Holy of Holies from the rest of the temple and only the priest could go into this place once a year to make atonement, to make a sacrifice for the forgiveness of the sins of the people. And so these Christians are thinking about this, going into the presence of God, and they're thinking of the Holy of Holies, and they're thinking, whoa, this is different. This says, let us go into the presence of God. Well, something happened when Jesus died on the cross. When Jesus died on the cross, it is historically recorded that that curtain, that thick curtain that separated the Holy of Holies from the rest of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. So it's not like someone went in there and like grabbed their scissors and was like, all right, we don't need this anymore. Let's start from the bottom and like to the top. It <laughs> started from the bottom, now we're here. No, like that's not what happened. The curtain tore from top to bottom when Jesus died on that cross. It was something from God up above down to us. It was because Jesus's death on the cross made a way for us to freely go into the presence of God. We go freely into the presence of God. Tonight, we, we do just that. When we pray, we go into the presence of God. 
we worship, we go into the presence of God. We go into his presence freely because of what Jesus has done for us. So we're told, we're told to draw near, fully trusting in him. When we trust someone, we get close to them, right? And one of the ways that we do that is what we do here together. What we do here together, we open up God's word together. We hear what God wants to speak to us together. We worship our trustworthy God together. We go into small groups together. Verse 23 says, let us, notice it says, let us hold tightly to the hope that we have for God can be trusted to keep his promise. There's a reason why this verse says, let us. We hold on to the hope that we have in Jesus and we do that together because our God is trustworthy and he never breaks his promises. Verse 24, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. In this family, we care for one another. We encourage one another. We love one another as we draw near to God together. Can I be honest with you guys? This past week has been tough. Have you guys had a tough week? Anybody else? Pretty rough? Okay. I can, I can relate. So my, my wife's aunt passed away unexpectedly about 10 days ago, and we just been grieving. It's been, it's been a tough week. And then last week, like we're kicking off for middle school and high school, and so it's a busy season. We're trying to get everything set up and going. And, and at the same time, my family's at home and they're grieving. They're, right, they're, they're mourning the death of a family member. And so I'm like feeling this tension of like, I need to be home with my family. And every time I'm here, I'm like, I need to be home with them. And every time I'm home with them, I'm thinking, oh, I need to do all this stuff to get done. And, and last week, man, I was just, I was in a fog. Like, and, and it's just been rough. But one of the most wonderful things that happened just in this last week is the joy of community. Like being able to share in my small group, I have a small group of guys, being able to share with them and friends just what's going on and for them to encourage me and to care for me and to point me to the fact that our God is trustworthy. Like that's what should happen in these small groups, right? We point one another to the fact that Jesus never breaks his promises that our God is trustworthy. And that's what I experienced this week. And I pray that that would be your experience in these small groups together. And so what should these small groups look like? I wanna give just a few rules, a few uh, boundaries, a few ways that if we did these things in our small groups, we will have the best small groups in the best year ever. So listen to these tips. Number one, is to be present. And you're like, check, I'm here. <laughs> well, not so fast, right? Because we can be here, you can physically be here right now and be on your phone and not actually listening, right? We can be in our small group and someone's talking and someone's explaining something that's going on in their life and we're thinking about, man, I wonder if I can get my parents to stop in Taco Bell on the way home. Like we're like, whatever, hey, hey, whatever you like, okay? Uh, but we can be here, but not actually be here. So point number one, to make these small groups worth it, be present, like pay attention to what people are saying and feeling. Number two, this is a big one. Are you ready? Be respectful. Be respectful. I know that's groundbreaking for some of you, right? 
one of the biggest hindrances of a good small group time is when people are talking over one another, right? I'm sure you can think of someone, maybe you are the someone, okay, that talks over the other person. Hey, this is a worthy skill to learn now, right? In school, in your future job, in your future relationships and friendships, we allow people to finish their thoughts and we give them the attention that they deserve. We respect their voice. And so in your small group time, when someone's talking and sharing, you're not. You're allowing them. You're not having a side convo with your friend next to you while the other person is sharing, right? We we want to allow everyone to be heard and to feel known and to actually feel cared for in that time. And so be respectful. Number three, be curious. Ask some good follow-up questions for one another. Like use this time to like sharpen your communication skills. And if someone is sharing something, like ask them questions like, tell me more about that. Or how did that make you feel? Or what else is going on? Or how can I be praying for you in that? Like ask some good questions that show that you are listening and that you care for one another. Number four, have fun, have fun. Like this, we should have a good time, right? We should have a good time in our small groups. We should be able to joke with one another. We should have a good time, but don't allow it to distract you from the conversation and the discussion that you're having. All right, so tonight we're, t- we're literally talking about small groups in our small groups. Okay, so have a good time in your small groups, but don't talk about video games the whole time or sports the whole time. Like have some fun, but actually talk about what we're talking about. And then lastly is to be real, to be real. We want your small group to be a place where you can express the doubts and questions that you have, no matter what it is. Hey, if you don't believe in God, or if you're, you're coming from a family life that's really hard right now, we want those small groups to be a place where you can share those things and get encouragement and receive love and care and prayer. And so be honest about where you're at. Be honest about how you're feeling. Be honest about where you are in this process as you think about all of these things. Maybe it's your first time at church tonight and you're like just sharing with your small group how you feel this night went. Hey, if you thought it was terrible, blame Josh, okay? I won't tell you which one. You just, yeah, I'm just kidding. You you can blame me. Both of them, sheesh. All right. All right, hey, hey guys, we're gonna close. Um, but before we do, before we go to our small groups, let me just say this, that you are going to get out of small groups what you put into them, right? If you invest in this time, if you care about this time, like there are going to be rewards that come out of it. But if you don't care and you're just disruptive and you, you show disrespect to the people around you in your small groups, then you're not gonna get anything out of them. And we might have to take you out of them. <laughs> so invest in this time. I remember going to youth ministry a couple times and when I was growing up and honestly, I I think I only went for the games, the candy and the cute girls and the fact that there was a basketball court. Um, But I look back at that time and I regret not investing in those opportunities. I look back at that time and I see the people that cared for me and I regret not investing in those times and receiving the encouragement and care that they were giving. So instead of asking, what can I get out of this? Let's go to our small groups and ask, 
how can we serve and love the people around us? Amen? Amen. Let's pray, and then we'll head to our small groups. Lord, thank you so much for these parameters. Thank you so much that that you tell us to stir one another up to love and good works. And one of the places that we do this is in our small groups. And so, Lord, help us to have just an honest heart. Lord, help us to be real with one another and express our doubts. And would it be a safe place for us to ask questions to one another and to our leaders? Help us to pray for one another. And would we leave small groups being encouraged and determined to build good friendships, pointing each other to the fact that you are a trustworthy God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Leaders, there's uh, the clipboards in the back if you're gonna add any more students.